Ben Meyer. And I'm Rob Wright. And this week we are once again going to talk about uh, piracy, again. but this time not PC piracy, oh. or at least not specifically. Uh, in the news recently, it's been more about console piracy, surprisingly. Yes. And uh, one big title leaked really early, Rob. Tell the people about it. Uh, as most people probably already know, Fallout 3, kind of a shock, leaked earlier this month in October, you know, like three weeks ahead of its release date, just for the 360 version, though, um, not the PC version. In fact, uh, I, did, you know, s scanned some of the torrent sites out there. I saw some listings for Fallout 3 on the PC for the, the torrents, but I don't think I, any of them that I saw were legit. They looked like uh, they were small file sizes in some of them. Some of the comments said that they were viruses, and <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny. But anyway, um, yeah, the 360 version was, 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 you know, leaked and torrented like crazy, yeah. and not the PC version, which was which kind of a unusual, because Fallout 3 is a game that has a built-in audience, I think, for the PC. It is, tr you know, the Fallout 1 and 2, the franchise that that's PC gamer hardcore right there, um, whereas, you know, the, the game was cracked for the... Yeah, and, and kind of kind of interesting. And 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 Bethesda has come out and said that they weren't using Secure on yeah. Fallout Three. Um, I don't know what or if they had DRM on it, but they ostensibly it, was, yeah, it would be easier to to crack than right. Secure on. Yeah, I mean they said there was going to be nothing like Secure on on the PC version of Fallout Three. So and and like I said, I. I haven't seen in one But it really hasn't just been Fallout no. 3 either. Like, just lately, you've seen Fable 2, Gears of War 2, Far Cry 2, all all cracked for the 360. Yeah, and, and like, well in advance of their street yeah, games, yeah. Which, is, which is interesting, because, I mean, you, you'll go on the torrents, you'll see a lot of console titles kind of around the time that the game is released, maybe a few days after. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, console piracy, like we said, is n it's nothing it's new. Like, but seeing so many of these games... Somebody had to have gotten their hands on them fairly early, like made a, a concerted effort to get these games, you know, from a warehouse before they ship to, you know, EB Games or Best Buy. I mean, there was the the situation with the the Technicolor employee. Right. It was caught with like a hundred thousand dollars with a. It was Fable Two and Gears of War Two, right? Yeah, a guy had a lot of booty. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, he had I think a hundred copies of those two games. I mean, well in advance of the of the release date. So, um, you know, that that I don't want to say. I mean, a lot of people have speculated that. This may be a, a concerted effort, maybe a, a, an organized effort by some, some different groups out there uh, that, that crack games to say, to, to specifically target the console versions of some of these games and console exclusives and crack those and throw them up on the torrents and not the PC games to kind of prove a point and say console piracy is just as bad as PC piracy. I don't know if that's true, but it does make you wonder. Yeah. Uh, to play devil's advocate and not necessarily take the opposite side, I'll just say that these are big titles expecting huge sales. So there's a lot of titles out there in the wilderness, you know, as it prepares for these big sales. And that leads to more opportunities to hack. Yeah. But on also, if you're a console only and you know that it's going to be popular if you are a nefarious a doer, then there's more incentive for you to go out and, and find it early and crack it and, and be that either that star or, or, you know, actually organized kind of criminals selling it to early to make money even. Yeah, so. yeah, I mean, there are people that do that. I mean, I mean it's weird, though, because, you know, I, again, I don't know if this, is, if this is a legit sort of conspiracy theory, well, you you look at the companies that that are have made these games that don't that have been leaked. I mean, Ubisoft has said they're pulling back from the PC because of piracy. Epic just you know last month the lead designer Cliff Blazinski comes out and says there's gonna be no Gears of War two and no because piracy is too big of a concern. There's too much piracy on the PC. And lo and behold, a few weeks sure. later, Gears of War two ends up on the torrent. I mean. I don't know. I don't know if that's a, if, if if that's you know in, intentional. If there are people trying to make a statement, but even if they're not trying to make a statement, I think it does show that yeah. I mean, console piracy is a big issue, and it's you know it seems to be getting worse. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if the sheer numbers are, are making it worse, but you 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 gotta wonder if it's. You know, if it's if it's going to be as bad as well, because an early hack of a of a game which te tended to happen in PC games yes. earlier, those are the ones that really hurt sales, right? Because if so many people buy it day one, especially yeah. the hardcore fans, but if they see it on a tour two weeks earlier, they have two weeks to think about. Yeah. Should I just do it now? You yeah. know, take it right now. I really want to play this game, and that can have that can have an actual effect yeah. on sales. Now, of course, it doesn't impact. 
uh, you, you know, it doesn't impact sales as much as, right. as PC gaming. But you know, it's not hard to hack a console anymore. No. Like I, I always assumed it was difficult up until recently, but it really is not. Well, that's because you're a noob, but that's okay. I'm honest. Yeah. No, I mean it is. It is really easy. I mean that's that's you know one of the things that a lot of PC gamers have have kind of uh, vented and complained about in our discussions or whether it's second take or some of the articles that we've written about piracy is that you know console piracy is just as bad as PC piracy. Um, you know I don't know if I agree with that. I, I I think PC game piracy and I've I've long argued this. I think it's worse than console piracy. Maybe not in sheer numbers and volume and and the, and the titles out there. But just in the effect, I think it's 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 more damaging for the PC because I don't think PC games, at least here in the states, they don't sell as much, so they can't afford to, to lose that same percentage of sales to pirates that a console title can, especially when console titles I and mean, crap titles are selling two million copies. Yes, yeah. and they're generic shooters; they're going you know double platinum. So yeah, they can lose thirty percent of the sales and still make their money back for the budget of the game. But you know, it, it, even though the, the, it's more damaging, I think to the PC. You know, modding the console. I mean, flashing your Xbox 360 drive is easy. I yeah. mean, it's it's not hard at all. Uh, there are tutorials for it. There's videos out there. You know, modding the Wii. It doesn't take a lot of hardware. You don't have to to buy all new new junk to to build a you know a Frankenstein's monster or something. It's it's fairly easy if you know what you're doing. Yeah, so. yeah, and and I think more and more people will do that if things come out early and you know really wet people's appetite. It's interesting now too that you know consoles are based on on, on the hardware. Yeah. But it seems like uh, PC gaming has at least started to kind of work on changing business models to adapt not only to piracy but to just to the popularity of the consoles in that model and say, hey, let's do more MMOs, more stuff like Steam, um, you know, free games that are advertising based, yeah, yeah. add-ons, all these sort of things to try to do things that are new. This is something that Randy Stude talked a lot about in an interview he gave re recently. He's the, the head of the PC Gaming yeah, Alliance. Yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how piracy is affected on the console if PC gaming moves away from easily piratable yeah, content. that's a great point. I mean, forget about DRM. Just look at the situation now with, like, let's say Steam or let's say, you know, Blizzard with, a, with an MMO signing into the game, signing into a server remotely to play your game online, maybe not needing an online connection, maybe you have a situation like Steam where it's just authenticating it. Uh, you don't actually own the physical disc anymore. You're just you're downloading or it's software as a service. Like you're literally renting the game now. You're never actually in possession of the physical disc, so you can't copy it. PCs can do that. PC games are flexible that way. They they can they can go with that model. What are the consoles going to do? Consoles rely almost entirely on the physical disc. So what are they going to do if, if piracy increases? If you see more and more games, more and more of these high-profile files leaking two three weeks in advance. Really putting a dent in the sales. How are consoles going to react to that? Because it, remember, it's it, like you said, it's the hardware, it's the box. You know, I don't know what they're going to do. Yeah, I mean, they're already the working on the next generation. generation. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I still think that you know, they're both. Uh, Microsoft and Sony are working, and Nintendo are working towards online, uh, you know, all kinds of online content. They already have yeah. that, and that's only going to be more and more prevalent. And I think down the line, they're they're seeing software as a service too. It's just a question of when yeah. and how long that will. Will it be take. in the next generation? I don't think so. I mean, they're Probably already not. working on the the new 360, the new new PS4. I don't know if they can adapt in time, and if they go into the next generation still relying on that on those physical discs. And not having good, you know, copy protection against it, you know, you you could see a complete reversal of fortune. You could see PC gaming thriving and really not suffering from piracy as much, and and the consoles taking it on the chin even more. So. Yeah, and, and obviously the games that have broken through on the PC side that are are, are non. Uh, uh, stealable things like World of Warcraft are making tons and tons, tons of money. Of money. Tons so of money. there's certainly opportunities out there. Yeah. That's all the time we have for this week. I'm Ben Meyer. And I'm Rob Wright. And we'll see you next time. Today we're not going to talk about piracy. Why? Because we're sick we're and tired sick and, and tired, tired, tired of, of talking. We're not going to talk about piracy anymore. Just kidding. We're going to talk about piracy. We need a new shtick. God, I feel old. Let's talk about Bill Ayers. Let's talk, Let's talk about Sarah Palin's 
you know, travel budget. <laughs> let, let, let's do let's do more Marky Mark talk to animals impersonations. <laughs> hey donkey, how's it going? Hey chicken. <laughs> Say hi to your mother for me. <laughs> 